All right. Two weeks ago, I did the Captain America issue with Andrew in a barn. Here is the follow-up to that in Avengers 286. Before I begin, I want to stipulate that I think that this is the Avengers, the team. I think this is the team's lowest ebb. She Oaks is the most recognisable face on the team. It's basically a roster of leftovers and second stringers from Roy Sternman's run and Randall's who showed up one day. It's not a flat run time for the team. Roy Sternman, he left the book after last issue and so we have this fill-in story for five issues by Marky Mark Griswold. I didn't mind it, but it is a real step down. And some of the characters and their attitudes, they are so changed that it gives you whiplash. Here is a splash page of Dr. Droom just for, I think, longest viewer of this channel, Robin. Well, second longest after me. I have to watch every video back at least once and I've done since inception. You cannot beat that. Dr. Droom... His cloak switched from blue to purple between issues. It is a little change I didn't think anyone has pointed out before and I have always wondered about it. If Dr. Droom didn't fit your definition of Randalls who showed up one day, we have Achlan from Alpha Strike... The Bailey of Legal Age Girl that Seaman groomed and married. Roy Sternman set her up as a presence at the end of the last issue. But I didn't think he had the intention of actually having her stay and be part of the team. But rather be a supporting character. Nevertheless, with this issue, she is pretty much part of the team. Well, not for long. She is dead. Three issues into Simon Waltonson's run. Murdered by her husband, who I maintain definitely groomed her. There is some dodgy, creepy age thing going on there. See, man, he has been around since the war. Achlan was, like, nine years old. Her biology advanced faster, but... Why am I talking about this? Here is somewhat sexier than sexual predators. It's she Oaks. It's not just the team lineup that isn't on top form... They are also between bases at the minute. Their headquarters was raped and pillaged by the masters of evil. So they relocated to Captain Stingray's Island, which was only meant to be temporary. But now they are rebuilding and constructing a new base there. And I have seen people point to Captain Marbles, the real one, Monica Rambeau, as a character who was trapped really spitefully in this story. But I think that is reaching. People want to demonise Marky Mark for losing Roy Sternman as writer. And that's really more Tom Falcon's fault. And Monica Rambeau, she does get it bad in 
Simon Waltonson's run after this. But the way some people frame this fill-in story, they act as if every character is second-guessing her or disobeying her orders. The bad guy for the overall story is Fister, and that is why Roy Sternman receives a core credit which I am not going to include in the video description because Roy Sternman has said on forums before that he actually did not contribute anything at all to this issue beyond the setup of Fister being the bad guy for it, which was at the end of the previous issue. And it turns out not to be Fister anyway. You'll be getting impatient for the Andrew at this point. So the Avengers, they get an emergency call to go to Ohio. And Seaman tries to ditch Achlan, but she's not having it. And she comes along anyway. Would you guess that... The Andrew, which Captain America irresponsibly left in a barn with a civilian family watching over it, has reawakened and become a problem. Captain Marbles, the real one, Monica Rambeau, she gets there before the rest of the team because she can travel at light speed. And you see, Fister has tracked Andrew down and he is wanting to raise an army of mechanical soldiers and Andrew is on his list of robots to unionise. It's Marky Mark, it's always a bleeding union with him, innit? And Captain Marbles... The real one, Monica Rambeau, basically one-shots Fister here. And there is my favourite thing ever. This is what we all thought robots saw in the 80s. I think Andrew's operating system has been downgraded. Because I'm sure in the issue of Captain America... He saw in full colour. So then the rest of the Avengers arrive. And we have another of my favourite things. Seaman rushing in, headstrong and getting creamed straight away. This comic is making a lot of the right moves for me. She Oaks. She gets a bit more of a fight with Andrew. This stuff is fun. To balance it out, we have some wonky as fuck writing with the subplot bit. Achlan has ran off to prove herself to Seaman and she is following Fister's truck, which... The rest of the team ignored and let drive away because they were busy fighting Andrew. We have this bit up here where Darth Knight thinks thoughts that people will point to as dismissive of Captain Marbles, the real one, Monica Rambeau. But I want to counter that by saying this issue set up that Darth Knight was still hung up on wasps. And Darth Knight, he has worked with Monica for ages and thinks much of her as a hero. His thoughts here are clouded by his feelings for wasps. He wishes wasps was still leader of the team because he fancies her i didn't think this is marky mark trying to have every character saying 
moniker is shit. I think it's just a badly spotlighted train of thought for a character. So, the Avengers, they beat Andrew, and it wasn't Fister anyway. And then we have this bit, and this is definitely... He has mentally forced her to do this. I didn't care what the comic says. He has subliminally controlled her to kiss his head. It is what Dr. Drew would do. And it is the only reasonable explanation. Especially since a few issues again. Dr. Drew took pleasure in... Humiliating and making she hulks look like an idiot. No way is this summit she hulks is dying of her own free will. Oh, and then Achlan, she gets captured by the real Fister to be continued. I. Some people might say I have blinders on. That I just needlessly praise Marky Mark or I make excuses for them. Like with this issue, I try to deflate a lot of the Monica Rambo stuff. And that one is something I truly believe in. Marky Mark, he had no problem with the character or her becoming leader of the Avengers. He edited and okayed all those stories. Then the minute Tom Falcon became editor-in-chief, suddenly Monica Rambeau was a problem and isn't allowed to lead the Avengers. And Marky Mark gets all the blame for that. But my point is, my point was Ganon to be, I didn't have blinders on. Other than the stuff with Andrew, the fighting with Andrew, this issue isn't very good. It's very obviously a step down from Roy Sternman. Marky Mark can't write the team anywhere near as dynamically as he did. The members just didn't have as much depth added to them in a single issue as when Roy Sternman wrote them. I like the Andrew bits, but the main action scene isn't enough for me to say that this is a brilliant comic. This is somewhere between average and above average. Nice artwork. A decent story in parts, a good fight, but the characters, the scripting, and overall pacing just can't measure up. Seven thumbs up.